Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're out here in the air gun bunker and today I've got kind of a unique uh, little gun to show you. This is the HK MP7 put out by Umarex. Now this is a replica of the actual firearm but what's kind of unique about this is it's not CO2 operated. This is a brake barrel and so I'm kind of excited to show you guys some of the details of this gun and we'll go into uh, shooting it and I'll just try to show you as much as I can in this review. The overall weight of the MP7 is six pounds and the length with the stock fully extended um, from butt to muzzle is 31 and a quarter inches. Now I'll show you guys some more details on this stock. I'll show you how it folds and I'll give you guys the length um, for each one of those adjustments. This gun is outfitted with a 6 inch rifled steel barrel that is chambered in 17 caliber. And the barrel stops roughly about here. Um, the rest of this is a fake suppressor which essentially acts as a cocking aid um, to help with the leverage to cock it which you guys will see later when I do some shooting. Up top is 11 and a half inches of Picatinny rail. This gun did come with a Axion dot sight, which I've mounted on here, I've been using, and it seems to work out pretty well. Although this gun probably could handle a small compact type scope. And it would have to be pretty small because this is a brake barrel, and if you're gonna break this open, um, you're gonna have to keep in mind that that scope you know, can't go past this, otherwise you're not gonna have room to be able to load it. Um, so it's just something I wanted to mention if you're looking to mount a scope on this. Just like the real firearm, this does have an adjustable stock here that you can adjust from six inches all the way out to 10 inches. There's two things that kind of bother me about this stock. And number one is the little latch here um, to be able to extend it. Um, it's kind of finicky and tight it's it's a bit difficult to use I think the first couple times I did it I was pretty frustrated uh, but after using it you know for a couple weeks I've gotten used to it and then the other thing is when you shoulder the gun and you got your cheek here and you're looking down um, to sight um, this is a bit sharp here and so I think for me I think I'd probably put like a pool noodle over this and if you're a left-handed shooter um, this has kind of a little notch here, um, which is probably definitely going to dig into your, your cheek. Um, just something to think about, something I thought I would point out. This gun is outfitted with two Picatinny rails on each side. Um, you can mount accessories, flashlights, lasers, um, kind of a nice little um, touch, I think. And then on top of that, you've got points here where you can mount a sling um, if you wanted to do so. I had been shooting the MP7 for a good couple weeks and I decided to test here at 20 yards using the Crossman Premier Destroyers. Those come in at 7.4 grains and they're shooting a high of 473 and a low of 469 and so that's just about 3.68 foot pounds and I was getting pretty good accuracy at 20 yards with that dot sight. The trigger on the MP7 is not that great. It comes in at just over eight pounds. It's got little to no first stage and it's got a really long second stage. Um, but through using it over a couple weeks, I did get used to it. And I found that the ergonomics of the gun really didn't make it seem as bad as it was. Next up, we tested the H&N Barracuda Hunter Extremes and those come in at 9.57 grains and they were shooting a high of 405 with a low of 388 and so that's just about 3.49 foot pounds and so they are a bit heavier but I found that they were equally as accurate um, at 20 yards. We did test the MP7 out in the backyard. I set up the decibel meter and I wanted to do some readings even though those things really are not scientific. They give us a good baseline of really kind of what you can expect. 
And this is on the higher scale of what I call backyard friendly, which is about 95 decibels. Now typically a backyard friendly gun that's pretty quiet is going to be around 75 to 85, while something really loud is going to be well over 100. So I think with the 6 inch barrel that really contributed to making this just a little bit louder than your standard full length brake barrel. Cocking and loading the MP7 is not difficult at all. I wasn't able to find any actual stats on the weight, but I'm going to guess it's just over 20 pounds. Fairly easy, and I think that cocking aid definitely helps with that. So I really hope I was able to show you guys a little more detail of the MP7. As I mentioned, there's really only two things that bothered me. Um, one being the actuator for the stock adjustment here. And then two, you know, it's a little uncomfortable to shoulder with this metal bar. I think um, I'm probably going to go ahead and put a pool noodle over this just to make it a little bit more comfortable. Um, but it is very accurate as you can see. Um, I like the versatility of being able to mount optics on this. It did come with this dot sight. Um, which I think adds to the value of it, um, but I think for me I'm going to experiment with putting a compact scope on here because as accurate as it is, I think I can probably use it for real close range ratting. Um, but let me know in the comments what you guys think, if you have any experience with this, I'm curious to know. Uh, but I appreciate you guys watching and I really want to thank Umarex for sending me this um, to be able to review and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.